Okay, give us the clap. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we're over here repairing a tarp. As you can see, we had a windstorm while we were at camp last night. A little thunder, a little lightning, put some tension on my tarp. While we're talking about tarps, you'll notice that I just have a cheap little polyurethane tarp from Canadian Tire, hardware store, wherever you get it. Um, they go on sale a couple of times a year, more often than not, a couple of times a month. Um, this tarp is a nine by 12, covering my tent quite adequately. It uh, only cost me $5.99. I really don't care how it weathers. This is the third canoe trip I've had this tarp on. My grommet's going to snap. I still have one more night at camp. I'm going to fix this grommet so that we're okay at camp tonight. And it's just going to take the tension off the other grommets so not more go. When these tarps start to weather like this and I start to get a lot of grommets, I do reuse them. Um, I have a friend that has a farm and I pass them on to him and he uses them to cover equipment and, and items at the farm. Rather than spend $100 on a sill nylon tarp, this is a, a way I choose to go. It's low budget and it's uh, repurposed a lot easier without a lot of crying when this kind of thing happens or when embers from a fire make their way over to a tarp. And you're sad that the $100 tarp didn't make the canoe trip. Yes, they're a little bulkier. They're about the same weight. About. I, I use that word loosely. I know grams matter, but at the same time, bank account does too. What we're going to need here for supplies is a pair of multipliers. Right currently now, I have one of my large spikes I talked about uh, earlier in my uh, Possibles bag. It's a large 5-inch nail spike. I have it warming up in the embers of the fire. I'm going to use that hot spike to melt a hole where the tarp overlaps each other. Um, and I'm going to make a new hole here for a plastic grommet that I always carry in my repair kit. So you can see there in amongst the pine needles. There we go. There's two sides to a grommet. Um, I guess you can say a male and a female end and a gasket as well. We're going to steps here are to burn a hole large enough for this to fit through. Then we're going to attach one side of the male and then the female side on and we're going to use the multipliers to snap the two together. So I'm going to run over to the fire and grab the nail and I'll be right back so we can continue with this repair. And why don't you want to cut rather than melt? We want to melt rather than cut. Good question. Um, because when you cut, you end up with tears and it continues like it's tearing now. I can't put a grommet in this existing hole because it's too large, but it'll continue to tear across the tarp. Whereas if you melt, it seals this because it's a woven tarp of plastic and it'll seal it rather than cut it and then the tear will continue along that woven length. Okay, so I'm back from the fire with the hot nail. Um, it's not red hot, it doesn't have to be, it just has to be hot. I'm going to work fast. I'm just going to touch it here and hopefully it's hot enough to melt through. And I don't think it is. Oh, maybe. There we go. Now I've got the hole. I'm just going to make the hole a little larger by rolling it around a bit. There we go. Now don't be surprised if you have to warm the nail up a few times because it cools as you're running back and forth. Ideally, this would be good if you took the tarp down, but I'm a little lazy today and we're going to do it wide standing so I don't have to untie the other six ropes. <laughs> Probably not best to inhale the fumes. <laughs> I'm going to put this down on a rock. So we're going to put the nail in through with a rubber gasket on it. That's a nice good seal. The female end on the top and squish them together with the pliers. 
it's important to line them up so the plastic snaps firmly into place. And there we go. Now I'll untie this and tie it into this grommet and the tarp will be hung properly with tension for the night. Okay, so now we're at the final tying it tight stage. Um, not all my corners and grommets have this, but I prefer a bowline. There'll be not videos to follow. Attach it to the tarp. Some people prefer attaching it to the tree, and depending on the situation, I do the bowline to the tree and the tensioning knot to the tarp as well. But in this situation, I'm going to go from a bowline through here, go back to this tree, and do a trucker's hitch to pull it taunt in that direction. And here we go. Now, all the knot heads out there are probably criticizing me on my knot skills, and that's okay. My father and my grandfather were Boy Scout masters, and I'm used to criticism on my knots. And my nephew, the cameraman, is saying, me too. So the tension's there that we want. And I'm actually kind of conveniently using this tree as a bit of a pulley. As well as this as a pulley. And we're going to tie this off with a round turn and a half hitch. I zigged when I should have zagged because I'm working backwards. And I'm going to still want to do that three times because why not? Yes, pun intended. Not that you can play a note on a guitar on that, but over here we have the broken grommet, dangly bits, and we have the new repaired grommet, and we have a nice tar tight tarp for water runoff tonight. And what happened to me at 5.30 this morning? Some nasty squirrel on the tree up above was bombing pine cones at me and that would have hit my tent but instead Mr. Tarp protected my tent. There you go. Scene. Goodbye. <laughs> 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 sitting on the sunny side of the island. <laughs>